find the unit tangent vector and the principal unit normal vector for the following parameterized curve. We're then asked to verify that the magnitude of the unit tangent vector equals the magnitude of the principal unit normal vector. We want to verify that these are both unit vectors, so their length is 1. And we also need to verify that these two vectors are in fact orthogonal. And we verify that by checking that the dot product of the two vectors equals 0. So to begin, let's recall the definition of the unit tangent vector. So the unit tangent vector is defined as the tangent vector by the magnitude of the tangent vector. So here we go. So the first thing that we need is the tangent vector. So r prime of t. So differentiating our given parameterized curve, we are going to be left with t minus 5, 0. Beautiful. Now, we need to find the magnitude or the length of this tangent vector. So, plugging these components into our distance formula, we have the square root of t squared plus negative 5 squared, which gives us 25. Beautiful. And we can't simplify any further than that, so that's it. And we can say that, therefore, the unit tangent vector, capital vector t, again, is the tangent vector by the length of the tangent vector, the magnitude of our tangent vector. And so we are left with the vector with the components t, negative 5, 0, divided by the square root of t squared plus 25. Again, we'll use parentheses there for our safety. So now that we have our unit tangent vector, we're ready to take this and find the principal unit normal vector. So let's begin by recalling the definition of the principal unit normal vector. Voila! So we know that the principal unit normal vector is defined as the derivative of the unit tangent vector by its magnitude. So looking back up at the unit tangent vector we just found, well, let's begin by rewriting this so that we can use a product rule when differentiating. So I'm simply going to take that unit tangent vector and rewrite this as the real valued function, so that's t squared plus 25 raised to the negative one half multiplied by the vector with components t, negative 5, 0. So we have the real valued portion multiplied by the vector. And we'll now go ahead and apply the product rule to differentiate. So this is going to become negative 1 half multiplied by t squared plus 25 to the minus 3 halves multiplied by 2t. So that's the derivative of the first, or the real valued function, multiplied by the vector t, negative 5, 0. And then this will be plus, and we need a little bit more room. So we'll scooch up all the way, giving ourselves plenty of room. So that's going to be plus the original real valued function, t squared plus 25, raised to the negative one half, multiplied by the derivative of the vector. And that's going to leave us with 1, 0, 0. And we're ready to simplify. So let's see, these 2's will cancel. And rewriting this, what are we left with? We're going to have a minus t multiplied by the vector with components t, negative 5, 0. And that is all divided by t squared plus 25 raised to the 3 halves. And in our second term, this is plus the vector with components 1, 0, 0, all divided by t squared plus 25 to the 1 half. So notice here how our denominators are almost the same. 
So to attain that common denominator, let's multiply this second term by t squared plus 25. And of course, whatever we do to the numerator, we must do to the denominator. And we can simplify our first term by distributing that minus t through to each component. So this is leaving us with the vector with components minus t squared, 5t, 0. And that is still all over t squared plus 25 raised to the 3 halves. And now with our second term, we can distribute this t squared plus 25 through to each component in that vector. And this is going to leave us with plus the vector with components t squared plus 25, 0, 0, all over that same denominator, t squared plus 25 raised to the 3 halves. Lovely! So now by a little vector arithmetic, we can combine the like components of those two vectors. So in other words, we can combine the x components, we could combine the y components, and we can combine the z components over one common denominator. So thinking about the x components, again, we have minus t squared plus t squared plus 25. So those t squareds cancel each other right out, leaving us with just 25. We then have the y component, so 5t plus 0 is simply 5t. And then 0 plus 0, of course, is just 0. And that's all divided by t squared plus 25 raised to the 3 halves. So what is our final answer here for the derivative? So I'm going to say that this is the derivative of our unit tangent vector. I'm going to pull that scalar multiple 5 out from our vector. So our scalar multiple is 5 by t squared plus 25 raised to the 3 halves multiplied by the vector with components 5t, 0. Lovely. So now that we have the derivative of our unit tangent vector, we're ready to find the length. And let's give ourselves a little bit more room. So here we go. The length of our derivative of the unit tangent vector. So we can keep that scalar multiple by the length of a scalar multiple property. We can keep that out in front. So it's 5 by t squared plus 25 raised to the 3 halves. And then we have the square root of 5 squared is 25 plus t squared is t squared and plus 0 squared, which is just 0. Now, wait a second. We can simplify here. Notice we have like terms in the numerator or the denominator and the numerator. So we can cancel, leaving us with 5 all divided by t squared plus 25. And so we can say that, therefore, the principal unit normal vector, vector cap, capital vector n, which we know is the derivative of your unit tangent vector by its length, So we have 5 by t squared plus 25 to the 3 halves multiplied by the vector 5t, 0. This is all divided by that length we just found, which is 5 all over t squared plus 25. We, of course, know that fractions in the denominator will flip or we are multiplied by the reciprocal. So we now have 5 by t squared plus 25 raised to the 3 halves multiplied by the vector with components 5t, 0. And this is multiplied by the reciprocal of our denominator. So that's t squared plus 25 all divided by 5. And look at this lovely simplification. 
our fives will cancel each other right out. And then by properties of exponents, right, this is t squared plus 25 to the first. So we can simplify with the t squared plus 25 to the three halves. So these will cancel. This disappears entirely. And in the denominator, our exponent here becomes one half. And our beautiful final answer for the principal unit normal vector, it's one by t squared plus 25 to the one half, or you can even rewrite that as the square root, multiplied by the vector with the components 5t zero. And so there you have it, the principal unit normal vector. Part two, we're asked here to verify that the length of the unit tangent vector equals one, and that the length of the principal unit normal vector is also equal to one. Now, we just found the unit tangent vector and the principal unit normal vector, so now we need to check their lengths. So, again, keeping that scalar, the length of a scalar multiple property in mind, we can see that the length of the unit tangent vector is going to be equal to that scalar multiple, 1 by the square root of t squared plus 25. Or you could keep that written as 1 by t squared plus 25 to the 1 half. And now we have the distance formula, or the square root of t squared plus negative 5 squared, which is 25, plus 0 squared. Now, would you look at that? These square roots cancel each other out to one, leaving us with one. Woohoo! So we verified that the length of the unit tangent vector is one. And very similarly, we want to now check the principal unit normal vector. So again, by the length of a scalar multiple property, we keep the scalar multiple one by the square root of t squared plus 25 or again, you could keep that written as 1 by t squared plus 25 to the 1 half multiplied by the distance formula. So we have 5 squared is 25 plus t squared, which is t squared, plus 0 squared, which is 0. And hey, we can cancel again. Woohoo! Those guys cancel each other out to 1, showing us that the length of the principal unit normal vector is 1. And we have... Therefore, verified that both of these beautiful vectors are, in fact, unit vectors. Hooray! Part 3. So in Part 3, we are now asked to verify that the unit tangent vector and the principal unit normal vector are orthogonal. And we check this by showing or demonstrating that the dot product of these two vectors is zero. So again, in part one, we found these two vectors, and so we're ready now to compute the dot product. And I'll abbreviate dp for dot product. Alrighty, so here we go. We have the unit tangent vector dotted with the principal unit normal vector. And let's see, we can just copy these two vectors. So here is our principal unit, or excuse me, our unit tangent vector, and we are dotting this with the principal unit normal vector. Now, by properties of the dot product, we can keep our two scalars out in front. So we can think about this as, and let's give ourselves plenty of room. So this is 1 by the square root of t squared plus 25 squared. And we're multiplying this by the product of the two vectors. So we have the vector with components t, negative 5, 0, and we're dotting this with the vector with components 5, t, 0. And look at the scalar multiple. 1 squared gives us 1, and if we square the square root, we're left with just t squared plus 25. Woohoo! So now we're multiplying this by the dot product. So we have t times 5 gives us 5t, plus negative 5 times t is a minus 5t, 
plus zero times zero is zero. So this is equal to one by t squared plus 25 multiplied by zero, which is zero. Woohoo! And so therefore, we have just demonstrated that the unit tangent vector dotted with the principal unit normal vector is equal to zero, thus confirming that these two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other.